For those of us who are constantly facing one struggle or another, or one struggle after another, God has given us the power to resist. But it's only found in that life that's submitted to God. Listen to the letter that James wrote to the church. James, the brother of Jesus. He wrote a letter to give believers understanding of their relationship with God and the responsibilities that come with it. Did you catch that last part? We're, we're in love with the relationship with God. What we don't like is the responsibilities that come with it. Oh, well, pastor, isn't it all grace? Yeah, it's all grace. And God gives you the grace to live up to your responsibilities. You didn't, you didn't catch that. Maybe, maybe somebody at home caught that. Okay, yes, this relationship is all about grace. And he gives you that grace. And when we enter into that relationship by grace, okay, and that grace gives us the power then to live up to our responsibilities in that relationship. Do you understand, church, that we have responsibilities in this relationship? James chapter 4, verse 4. Starts out very encouraging. You adulterous people. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God, either one or the other. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, here here it is, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to who? The The humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. There it is. But see, most people try to resist the devil without submitting to God. Your ability to resist the devil comes from you submitting to God first. Amen? Amen? I'm going to keep teaching. You jump in any way you want. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Who's got to do the first step here? We do. He says, you draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, your hands, and sinners, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, 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 one day in the world, one day in the kingdom, one day in the world, one day in the kingdom. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Oh, pastor, this can't be the gospel. God just wants me to be happy. God just wants me to just skip through life happy and carefree. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Over what? Over our carnality? Over our love with the things of the world? Yeah, it gets quiet when you talk about this kind of stuff. That's okay. Like my wife always tells me on the way home, no, you don't understand. We're just listening. (laughs) Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will do what? Exalt you. Exalt you. We want the exalting. We don't want to do the humbling. We want the limelight, but we don't want to do the submission. We want to go up. We don't understand that the way up is the way down. 